We have two additional things we need to update on our view before we get started on our application. Go ahead and remove the text from your label. So I double clicked it and I just pressed delete to remove the text. You want to make sure that you're not deleting your label completely though. And the way you can confirm that is by looking at your scene, we see that I have access to all of the objects or view objects that are sitting on my view. So I have my label, I have a round uh, style text field, I have a button, and I have another label. We want to make sure that they're all here to make sure that we didn't actually delete any objects or view objects. There's one other change we need to make and that's we want to select our text field and we're going to go over to the right here and we're going to make sure that our attributes inspector is open. So this is the fourth element from the left. And we're going to go ahead and change the keyboard to a number pad because we only want to be able to enter numbers in for the number of bills. We don't want the user to be able to enter text in. Let's go ahead now and go to ccviewcontrol.m. So I'm going to go to single view first. I'm going to get rid of my assistant editor. And then I can press on ccviewcontrol.m. And we're going to be writing all of our code inside of the convert units method, which is down here. So just like view did load, load it up and all of the logic inside of it was evaluated because our view did load onto our screen. Everything inside of this set of curly braces for the convert units method evaluates when we press our button. So that's, that makes sense. When we press our button, we want to convert the number in our text field to the number of football fields. So let's get ahead, go ahead and start writing some code. The first line we need to write a, a, of our code is we need to first give it a type. We're going to say float. We're going to say number of bills. And we're going to set this equal to, well, where do we get this information from? Well, we get it from our text field. So we're going to say self dot number of bills text field. And before we've accessed the property text, so this is the way we get the information that it's currently in our text field. But there's one little problem, and that's the text property of our text field returns a string. Strings are not floats, and we just said that we want to get a float for the number of bills that we're entering in our text field. So how do we do this? Well, we have to convert our string to a float. We have to convert this set of characters to a number. Luckily, strings have a method whose name is float value that allows us to convert a string to a float. So how do I call this method? Well, I have to add a left bracket before my text field, and I'm going to add a space, and I'm going to do what's called a method call, which will convert the string to a float. So it's converting this set of uh, code, or this, this uh, bit of characters, which returns a string, and we call the method float value on it, and it changes it to a float. So now we have a number of bills, which is the, the float value of the text in our text field. Next, we need to do our logic. So we're going to write float number of football fields. And we're going to set that equal to the number of bills that we enter into the text field. And we're going to divide that number by 91,440. So here we create a new float called number of fields, and we set its value equal to the total number of bills divided by the total number of bills in a football field. Finally, we need to update our label to display this number. So we can write, we can access our label, so we can write self dot number of bills label. And before we've accessed the text property of a label to update the information on our label, we're going to set that equal to, well, we need to set it equal to the number of football fields. But just like we had to do earlier, which was convert our string to a float, we have to convert our float to a string. So how do we do that? Well, we have to do a method call again. So I'm going to add a left bracket, and I'm going to write add a string, because I need to create a string. And we're going to type string with format. And we're going to use what's called a class method. And we'll talk more about class methods in a few future video. But what this takes is a, a format string, much like we've seen in NSLog. So I can do at quote percent %f, which is a token. And what does a token expect? Well, it expects an argument. In this case, we're going to pass it number of football fields. I'm going to add a right bracket and a semicolon. And now we're going to be able to update our label with the correct number of football fields. So I can go ahead and run my application.
And when this thing loads up, there we go, I'm going to be able to go ahead and enter an inf uh, a number of bills here. So let's say I have uh, 50,000 bills. How many football fields is that? Well, that's 0.54 football fields. And if I were to go ahead and enter the U.S. national debt, which is a huge number, you can look it up online, with something like 16 trillion... 951 billion, and we'll just add a bunch of zeros after this. We don't need the exact number. And this is, well, this number is so big, it's not even showing up on our label. So we have one little thing that we can fix. These dot, dot, dots say to us that the number is too big to display. The label's running out of space. So if I go back to my storyboard, I can shift over this label a little bit, make this a little bit smaller. And I can enlarge this label so it has a little bit more space. I can also go ahead and reduce the font a little bit. And now when I run my application, I'm going to go ahead and enter the U.S. national debt in again. So we can say 16 trillion, 951 billion, and we'll say 123, 123, 123. And now we see that we get the full nice number that it prints out for us. 